Greetings. Today's session is entitled VMC with NSXT. These sessions are bi-weekly and are available via Zoom invite as well as streamed live on Twitch.tv. Alternating weeks will be a Twitch office hour session hosted by the customer success team discussing, discussing many aspects of our VMware Cloud offering led by me and uh, usually attended by Z as well. My name is Matt Vanderbilt. Uh, I am a customer success architect on the VMware Cloud customer success team. And on behalf of the VMware team, I'd like to personally thank you for investing your time with us today. VMware Cloud on AWS with NSXT was announced recently at VMworld Las Vegas. VMware transforms networking security by providing a ubiquitous software layer across data center, cloud, and edge infrastructure, maximizing visibility and context of the interaction between users, applications, and data. The VMware Cloud, the virtual cloud network enables organizations to embrace a virtual fabric as a software-defined architecture for connecting everything in a distributed world. In this webinar, you will learn about the improvements that NSXT brings to the VMware Cloud on AWS and the impacts it may have on your design. We're going to go over an overview of the new features coming with NSXT, the impact on your design, and we're going to do a live demo. Uh, as, as always, a live demo. We'll always have some fun with that. So now I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Z House. He's an IT professional with 18 years of experience working with both private and public sectors. Started working with VMware products in 2003 with ESX 2.1. He's a proud husband and a dad of a teenager and three dogs. Before we start, I'd like to remind all guests that they are muted. Please post questions using the Q&A feature at the bottom of the Zoom window or in the Twitch chat or even via Twitter at vcloudmat. Z, all yours. Thank you, Matt. I'm going to have to update my, uh, my little intro. I feel like I've done a number of these now that uh, may be boring some people. Um, but anyway, as Matt said, we are going to be going through some of the new features with NSXT as it per pertains to VMware Cloud and AWS. I do have a number of slides to go through and a live demo at the end. Um, actually, I'm totally just kidding. I have one slide, and it's the one that you guys are looking at right now. So with that, I'm sure everybody's tired of seeing it. I'll stop sharing and go over to my demo environment here. Oops. All right, um, so if you are aware, or if you're not aware, so I'm sure it will be covered again at VMworld coming up in Barcelona here in, uh, I think it's a week or two, but NSXT is, uh, is new, was announced at VMworld Las Vegas, uh, brings a number of features that a lot of customers have been asking for. Um, some of the functionality around Direct Connect uh, for, you can have private VIF for all your traffic some additional functionality around VPN. So just a, just a quick point of clarification there is NSXT itself is not new. It's yep. functionality, it's new to VMC. Correct, yes. correct. NSXT, I believe we're, uh, uh, we're, on a, we're on a dot two or a two dot release. And I think it's 2.3 is the current one. Uh, at least it was a week or so ago for on-prem. Um, so yes, it, it is not new. Uh, it is a, it's a different, um, hmm. Good, uh, good on the spot. Um, so, I mean, for everybody's a little bit of background, so we, we released VMC with NSXV as the back end, which is, uh, I would say, more common amongst our consumer base. Uh, yes. Actually, we, we guarantee it's more common about our consumer base, but there's a lot of functionality that, that Z is going to go over here with NSXT um, that in, it really enables some, some enhanced features in VMware Cloud and in the connectivity. And that was announced at VMworld, uh, went general, uh, went preview uh, early September, has just hit patch one, uh, which increased even functionality as of uh, like yesterday or a week ago. And, uh, and we're continuing to drive it. So that's kind of where we're going with it. NSXT is not new, but the, the functionality is, is a somewhat of a change in what we've been doing with VMC. Correct, correct. So yeah, and particularly around, um, uh, well, not, not around, just for, on, on, on VMware Cloud and AWS. Um, so a lot of the functionality that you may be used to on-prem, uh, distributed firewall in particular, uh, port groups, or sorry, not port groups, but groupings and mapping, stuff like that. A lot of the stuff that was that you had on-prem, uh, we did not have in VMware Cloud and AWS with NSXV. And so those features are all coming, coming to light with VMware Cloud and AWS with NSXT. Um, 
So let's just run through it here. So if you have, if you've got an SDDC, great. If you've got a OneNote SDDC, that's even better. Um, so this is the portal. We have a couple of SDDCs that have been deployed in our organization. This one here is the one we're going to look at today. Um, if you have deployed an NSX V-based SDDC, you'll notice that this tab is a little bit different. Uh, in V, it only says networking, and in T, it says networking and security. And the changes from there are pretty obvious, especially if you've seen it. So the overview screen is going to look completely different between T and V. If we have some time, if there's no questions, we can, we can show some of those differences between the two. Uh, but we'll just focus on, on what's new with T. So one of the, we'll start, we'll kind of run down the list here on the, on the tree. So one of the new things in T is that you now create your segments out of the, out of the CSP or the cloud services portal versus doing that through virtual center. Uh, functionality is still the same. You can have a, either a routed or extended network from the configuration standpoint, um, but it's done through here versus through virtual center through the uh, global inventory list previously. Um, one of the big ones is route-based VPN. Um, so uh, in V, we only had policy-based VPN, which was a little on the limiting side. So if you had you know, any types of changes, any new additional segments that you may have stood up in your VMC world required a reconfiguration of, of your uh, policy-based VPN, both in VMC, sorry, VMware Cloud on AWS and your on-prem environment. Uh, with route-based VPN, we have control over that now so that any, uh, any new segments that are created will automatically populate with uh, BGP. I can see here that I do have one pre-configured here for this demo to, uh, to my home lab. Uh, Policy-based VPN is still there, same functionality. Uh, I do believe we have a couple different settings that are in here uh, between V and T, uh, but uh, from mainly they're all, all, all the functionality is still there, maybe just a couple different uh, encryption types. Layer 2 VPN we also have as well. Um, same functionality that was there before. We do have the ability to route that Layer 2 VPN over a Direct Connect now. Sorry, and see if uh, we can establish this over our private, uh, our private address. Um, this is something that we did not have in, in V. Um, and one of the things to note, I don't know that we can kind of see it here. I, did, I was looking for a slide, I couldn't find it. Um, so with, with V, we had a requirement of two IPsec tunnels uh, or a Direct Connect. Uh, but if you're doing an IPsec tunnel, so we had a construct of a management compute or a management gateway and a compute gateway. And we had to establish one of those for each. Management was for all the management traffic, ESX, virtual center. Uh, if you were doing DR as a service, uh, Vs for application traffic, uh, HDX, anything like that, to be able to get to those management components um, from a private IP address. Same thing, so any compute workloads that you had in and the VMware Cloud and AWS also required an IPsec VPN tunnel from the compute gateway, and those were both managed separately, and there was no uh, communication path between the management and compute. You can kind of see that here on the screen. Um, any compute workloads, let's say you had something that was querying a, a virtual center API, or you had uh, VRLIZE operations um, that you're using to monitor your, your VMware Cloud and AWS environment. In order to do that with V, you had to establish an IPsec VPN between the compute and management gateways. Um, with T, the, the construct changed a little bit. We still have the, the concept of uh, MGW and CGW as we refer to them, but they sit behind a tier zero router. And that tier zero router is where your IPsec tunnel is gonna terminate. So over a single VPN, we can have both, we can pass both management and compute traffic. Um, and then there's also between just by way of uh, distributed firewall and the firewall rules, we can control either allow or deny access from compute workloads into the management. Uh, segment. And we'll demo some of that later on. Uh, NAT functionality is the same. Um, the gateway firewall, so this would be our, uh, in V would have been the firewall rules that we would have had on each of the MGW and CGW respectively. The distributed firewall is, is one of the new main features uh, with NSXT on VMware Cloud and AWS. We can emphasize that. Uh, we have the ability of doing groupings so that we can either do uh, do an IP address, we can or we can do some uh, um, policy-based groups. We'll sh we'll show some of that in the demo. Uh, services. So there's a bunch of predefined ones. So known 
well-known services and ports. Uh, if you need anything custom, we can specify those. IP fix and, and port marrying are also new with T. Gives you the ability to uh, uh, have some additional monitoring configurations in your SDDC. Um, I think that's about it. I'm sure I'm missing one or two of the, the features. One of the, the, the two main ones are going to be the distributed firewall and, uh, and the direct connect for all traffic with private BIF. So with V, uh, the only thing that we could move with um, with private VIF was uh, ESX management traffic and migration traffic, so vMotion and cold migration. Uh, everything else still required an IPsec tunnel and that would not go over your private VIF uh, with T. That's one of the, the main changes, at least the customers that I've been, been working with that have uh, an existing Direct Connect uh, that, that, they, that they wanted to have. And of course, distributed firewall. Um, I don't know if we have any uh, questions, take a quick pause, or we can jump into some uh, some demos. And so we don't have any questions quite yet. Uh, just a reminder, everybody, that there is the Q and A at the bottom, or uh, again on on stream chat if you're watching via Twitch. Uh, one thing to bear in mind as well too uh, is this is not the default yet. So while it will be the default at some point, uh, that's probably looking into a little bit of a debate. But there's subject to is a little bit late this year, maybe early next. So. Uh, any current SDDCs that you will deploy will still be in NSXV, uh, unless uh, well, I think we're calling this still in preview mode, uh, which means but maybe Z can go into a little detail about about that. Yeah. So as of today, today being October twenty third, we are still in preview mode. So if you do have a requirement for NSXT, whether it's distributed firewall, uh, direct connect, or any of the other functionality, route based VPN. Um, you'd work with one of your customer success architects uh, or your customer success managers, such as Matt uh, for the CSA side, or uh, if you have a CSM dedicated to your account, uh, we can go through and just make sure that uh, uh, that functionality is is uh, is appropriate, and we can go through and get those that feature enabled. Um, it is still in preview, so it would just it would be something that would just be for a proof of concept. Uh, would SDC would need to be deleted and then redeployed once it becomes available, which we're targeting here in the next couple of weeks. So we do have a question that just uh, just came in, Z. So uh, from uh, Diane Ed, it's um, can we have connectivity between ESX slash vCenter to the AWS VPC and compute workloads to the AWS VPC? So I believe the short answer is yes. Um, I don't know if you want, if you can see that in the chat. Uh, um, chat, chat. Let me pull it up here. Q and A. So yes, both of those do connect to the AWS VPC. Our hosts go over what is called an E and I connection uh, to the Amazon VPC, and that's how we facilitate stuff like uh, V Motion through a Direct Connect. And all of your compute workloads will also talk to EC2 workloads or S3 or any of those kinds of things as well. If that's kind of what you're asking. Correct. Um, so I, I can I, I should be able to demo this. Uh, I can stand up a, a quick EC2 instance. It may take a little bit of, of fumbling if you guys want to uh, to suffer through that. Um, let me get through a couple of the demos that I want uh, had had pre set up. Make sure that they go through, and then uh, at the end we can we can go through and demo that. But yeah, as, as long as there's connectivity, uh, both from the the security group on the AWS side, and then the firewalls inside of uh, VMware Cloud and AWS, yeah, you would have that that layer of connectivity to uh, to Virtual Center and the ESX hosts. And and really, that's one of the core tenets of of this offering is the ability to have all of those AWS services. Well, not all of them. Four four of them are currently supported. Five. Yeah, so we have uh, uh, EC2 would go uh, over the the cross the cross account ENI. Uh, EC2, S3, uh, th there's a toggle for that. That's a good uh, good call out here. So if we click on connected VPC, um, the default is enabled. Uh, so if you're gonna, by, de by default, if you want your S3 traffic to go over the cross account ENI, you need to have an S3 endpoint in that VPC that we're connected to. If you click this disable button right here, it will then go over the internet. Um, so we have EC2, S3, uh, EFS and RDS. Yeah, so maybe if you click on the, uh, I think it's the, the summary or the overview page where it shows the connection to the Amazon VPC. I mean, it's not a perfect representation, but. Yep. 
Yeah. So, um, and and one thing to call out that this is a uh, uh, a preview SDDC, so this isn't the final. Uh, one thing to note that we've called out is that the arrow does not go both ways. So, pending that again, your security group on the AWS side, and then your your firewall rules and the VMware Cloud and AWS side allow that, you can move past that traffic both ways. And we are and we are expanding the list of of Amazon services that will go over that ENI. You know, yeah, that's that's just going right. to keep coming with time. This is going to eventually we'll get around to a great majority of them. So there's another uh, so question. Gonna, another yeah, question popped in. Did you did you see that one come in? Yep. Okay. Uh, so bidirectional vMotion. So one of the things that um, one of the the drawbacks, or sorry, not drawbacks, one of the limitations on bidirectional vMotion currently is the on-prem version of Virtual Center. Um, so six. Our 6.7 update one shipped, um, and I believe on the 6.5 branch, I think it's update three. I have to go back and look at my notes. Um, so with both of those versions, 6.7 U1 and 6.5 U3, uh, let me look at my notes real quick. So, so while, while you're looking at those notes, I could add, so also another uh, requirement that we have is vMotion is only supported over a direct connect currently as well. Correct. Uh, so that's another uh, so the other reason why there's a little bit more qualification around the bi-directional is might be the foundation of the question as well as is with NSXT it's a different vi di distributed switch type so yep. so doing that conversion on the fly for a vMotion is what requires certain versions of vCentered if we were using NSXV it's a much more um, there's much more many more versions of vCentered that are supported correct correct so yeah it's uh, it's 6.7 update 1 or 6.5 update 3 um that, that's required on-prem. So if, you, if you're on the 6.7 branch, if you're on update one, that bi-directional, once, uh, once NSXT on VMware Cloud and AWS is, is available, then you'll be able to, will support that bi-directional vMotion uh, with Direct Connect. And then it also does require a layer two VPN connection as well, so that, that the network segment is the same. Um, okay. Uh, hopefully that, that answered your question. If not, I'm going to put it back in a chat here. Um, so what we can do now is we can jump over to Virtual Center. So I've gone through and I've configured this. Uh, you may notice at the top that this is a, this is a one node SDDC. That's the reason for the bar at the top. If you have not deployed a, a one node, uh, they do currently have a lifespan of 30 days. So this one's been kicking around for five days already. Uh, I've gone through and configured some settings so we can take a look at the route-based VPN um, very similar settings as far as policy-based. However, we do specify a BGP peer, um, and then we control what routes are advertised from your on-prem side. So one of the things to note is if your, your default configuration or depending on what kind of device you're connecting to on-prem, if it advertises a default route over this, you will route all traffic, uh, internet or not, back through that IPsec tunnel. Uh, may be desirable, it may not, but one thing to note just if you if you get to that point, you've got this configured, and you're like, well, why is you know I'm just trying to access the internet, why is that coming back or hairpinning back through my on-prem environment? And that would be because of the the default your uh, your route-based VPN is advertising a default route. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll show that some of the on my on-prem config uh, when we get there. So one of the things that I wanted to share is uh, we'll open this guy up here. Uh, just some of the firewall rules and some of the, the use cases. I've been working with a customer that has been doing, a, uh, it's, they're, they're using VMware Cloud and AWS as an isolated development environment. So there is no no I, no connect, connection back to on-prem, either IPsec VPN or Direct Connect. It's just, it's all completely isolated. They wanted to have uh, isolated networks. So like a dev test prod and like a shared, shared services type segment. So one of the things I was gonna go through, I thought it was a pretty interesting use case. Um, I wanted to go through and demo kind of some of that, that functionality and some of that setup. So what we have here is just a Photon machine. Sorry. That I can't type the password into. Um, so what do we get here? We got uh, 100.32. Can bounce back over here if you may notice this when I clicked on it before. So we just have a, a segment name. It's called shared. It's routed. Uh, our gateway. I like to be weird, so my gateways are .254. Uh, DHCP is enabled and specify a range. If you have a DNS suffix, you can specify that as well. Um, sorry to bounce 
But uh, one of the other things uh, that's with NSXT is we have the ability of uh, DNS zones on the compute side. Um, that just popped into my head looking at the at, at that the space. So if you have, let's say, uh, say, you know, 10, or maybe we're just going to dump this to Google, right? And if we added a new one that was we can then configure this to you know some on-prem or some other some other DNS server. Um, maximum of five that can be figured can be configured for the uh, for the compute. So, all right, segments. Um, if we come back over here, so we can say, hey, you know, I want to make sure that I have my connectivities established. Uh, this is my on-prem DNS server. So see the path that it's taking here. Um, so it's going through our ESG. These are internal. Um, 253 is my VMC side of my pairing. See it right here. 254 is my on-prem side. And then uh, 252 is my internal router. And then you can see it resolved my, uh, my domain controller. Um, so one of the things that we can see, we cannot get out to the internet. So some of the things that we can control, if we come over here and we look at our, our gateway firewall, uh, it's broken up into two different segments, our management gateway and our compute gateway. Management is going to be just like what it sounds. Um, oh, look at that. I've got a typo on it. I'm sure nobody noticed it, but I'll point it out. Um, so all of our management components, ESX, NSX, uh, if you have HDX deployed, if you have DR as a service deployed, uh, we will automatically plumb those groups for HDX manager and the DR as a service components. Um, and then you'll have to manually allow those. The only ones that are going to be pre-configured when you deploy your SDDC is going to be an ESXi outbound and a virtual center outbound. Uh, just from, from experience, most customers are deploying or configuring these anyway. So we auto plumb some of these rules. Another thing to call out is on uh, the difference between V and T is in V, we currently have what we call a firewall rule accelerator. So once your VPN is configured, uh, we'll go through and it just saves saves some clicking and typing. We'll uh, we'll detect the the networks you have configured on the policy based VPN, and uh, and auto plumb some firewall rules. Uh, we do have that on the roadmap for that functionality in T, uh, but that may be something that uh, if you're familiar with it, you uh, may notice that it is missing. Um, so on the compute gateway side. Um, so we've got shared inbound, shared outbound. I have pre-created a group RFC 1918 with our 10.172. and 198.192. IP addresses. Um, so that's the only thing that's allowed in and out right, right now, and it's over our uh, our VPN tunnel interface. So we cannot ping Google. Let's say we need to allow. some access to the internet. So one, one current difference too, as well with the V to T that is something we're working on is, so V has uh, what we call a firewall rule accelerator, uh, which has a lot of pre-built rules that you would need in there uh, to help you populate this. This is something we're working on with T as well, uh, just so everybody knows that, that eventually for common tasks, we will have uh, the accelerator, we call it, which will pre-populate a lot of information for you. Yep. Um, so when you create these rules, you have the option to uh, to apply these, uh, which direction. So uh, direct connect, all uplinks, um, our VPC. So running down the list, uh, VPN tunnel interface, that's obviously our, our, our IPsec tunnel that we have configured. Our VPC interface is our cross-account ENI into our connected AWS account internet facing interface, direct connect, all uplinks. One thing to note is that all uplinks does not include the VPN tunnel interface currently. Uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna resolve that or if that's uh, by, by intention, but 
but as of today, so if you set this for all uplinks and you're trying to pass traffic uh, over your VTI, that's going to be why. So you'll need to specify that. Um, so we can go ahead and specify internet internet facing. We'll publish our rule, and we can now get to the internet. Um, so this is this is the edge firewall. This is the functionality, uh, same type of functionality that we had in V. Uh, a little bit more refined, we can specify the interfaces that it applies to. We have the grouping, so we don't have to type in IP ranges. Um, so it's more, more, more refined, more refinement, right? So if we look at our groups, one of the things uh, that we do have to manually create, so you can see I went in and I called, I could have typed this, uh, I could have given this any name. So this is not pre-created. This is something that I've specified, uh, again, with all the 1918 address space in it. Um, I've also manually created this, uh, this shared segment, which specifies uh, my segment, the pretty much the entire segment. So anything that's that's on that has an IP in there, we'll be able to, uh, this firewall rule will apply to it. Um, let's add a segment. And you can specify a domain uh, suffix for this for the DHCP. Um, oh, another thing I want to show here. I'm sure everybody's uh, well aware of uh, BGP and how it works, but just for the sake, showing that this is this is a live lab. Uh, this is my my router, my on-prem router, my uh, house. It's uh, Edge Router Four. Let's see, what does this say here? Oh, live demo. I'm probably gonna have to log back in here. Um, so explanation of what we're seeing here. So this is our management segment um, that we specify when we deploy our SDDC. And this is the our shared segment that we have right now. Um, uh, would you look at that? So, so in case anybody was wondering if we were doing this live, um, obviously. Let's log back in here. And maybe when we're going over that, if anybody else has anything that they would like to um, to see as well, uh, you can put that in chat and, and we can maybe make a demo it, uh, provided we can get back in. Uh, also, one thing that maybe we could talk about a little bit uh, in the meantime is is that the the API is also available. So yep. while you can click all these buttons as well, um, there the API is there for a lot of automated tasks as well. Oh no! I'm wondering if they're patching our SDDC. Uh, look at that under maintenance. <laughs> well, that's horrible, horrible timing. Um, all right, well, we can talk a little bit here while uh, hopefully this comes back. I don't know. Uh, we do have a two hour maintenance window. So yeah, so so this is good. The internal stuff here this is a good point to talk about too, as well as that that, uh, that we, we, oh, we are doing ongoing maintenance on these environments uh, all the time. Now, why this happens particularly to us in, the, in this case is we're internal. Um, so this is not indicative necessarily of, of what would happen to everybody else. Uh, we usually give some warning on this kind of thing. So, correct. Um, so one of the thing, one of the things to note here. So uh, obviously, while this is under maintenance, um, uh, this banner up here. I'm not sure it's throwing this area here, but it should be a little more refined for the on the customer side. As Matt said, this is a this is a, our internal testing org um, for customer success. Um, so all of our workloads are still up and running, right? So I'm still able to get into virtual center. Uh, I can clone something. Uh, which is one of the things that I was going to do. All your workloads are remaining up. So the, this service here, just doing the quick glance while I'm trying to talk and demo as well, is, is just for the portal interface. Uh, so we do have a couple different uh, areas of maintenance. Uh, I guess one thing we could talk about, not really on the topic of NSXT, uh, we have the CSP or the cloud services portal. And we do maintenance from that from time to time. Um, you can see the status page here. Uh, 
Oh, uh, one, one thing we could do uh, as well while we wait here, and this is an ask from chat, uh, which you were intended to do anyway, was uh, demo demo the connectivity between the um, EC2 instance and so so we could maybe get into the yeah. uh, the Amazon interface and, um, and you know uh, I can I can show some of the settings for it. Um, give me one second. I got to grab my link here. So uh, for it, uh, another question just popped in while you, while you're working on that. So service insertion with NSXT. We're looking at later, probably end of this year, um, perhaps uh, early next year. It is definitely something as a high priority list item. Um, but yeah, I would not expect it to, to see it till probably the end of this year. Uh, we do have quite a few partners that are, that are uh, lining up to get in there as well. Uh, another question for you, Z, while you're doing that as well as it uh, came in, are we using uh, two different NSXT edge for MGW and CGW, or is it a single edge? So it, they are those constructs are behind a, a single tier zero edge. So in the sense, uh, if you're thinking of NSXV, they're not in, in that sense where they're two separate ESGs. So they're they're distributed in that sense. So the stateful services are all going to terminate on that tier zero. So like IPsec VPN, um, some of the features that are coming down the road, like service insertion we were just talking about, and uh, load balancing, so those will all terminate there, and then the rest of the components are distributed. Um, In the NSXV world, it is two separate edges, but yes, correct. Yeah, it's it behind is. one two um, zero. So on that side, sorry, I'm not very good at uh, at typing passwords and talking at the same time, obviously. Um, so they, there, there are two edges. They are in, in, uh, uh, in HA in an active standby state. So from that, from that sense, there, there are two, but they are, they're just in HA. It's not in the con the sense of uh, NSXV where we have two physical separate edges that may in, in V and in, in VMware Cloud and AWS they are two e two edge constructs that are also in HA. Uh, so the, technically, there's four on V. Um, so as far as the connectivity, I can go through, I can uh, stand up a VM, but I don't have the firewall rules, so we're going to be blocked, uh, but we can launch an instance here and see if we're ready for that. So there's another question that said that, okay, are they VRF then? Which... Um... I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, yeah, not it's a different concept, so there's no. Um, is that Maybe if you can refine that question for us, uh, Satish. Then, uh, well, Z is clicking around. Um, all right, what are we doing here? If I can see where my, I think I'm in C. Yeah, so Tish, actually, uh, it's funny, uh, you, you asked that question and bring that up. Uh, so the question was, do we have a diagram representation of this connectivity? So Z was actually looking for this earlier. Um, that's something that we'll, we'll try to direct your way. Um, we, we couldn't quite find the PowerPoint. I, I think I might have one that I can bring up here uh, shortly. Uh, I'll look for that for you while Z's working away. Yeah, so it, it, it's a... It it's a high level diagram to kind of talk about it, uh, but it gets the point across pretty well on, on specifically on the connectivity piece on the differences between V and T. Um, yeah, I was trying to locate that earlier, but it was uh, being elusive. All right. Um, so one of the things we can talk about here, one of the things we can show is so when you're when your account is linked, um, this really isn't a V or a T discussion, but just kind of some information on on what that looks like. Um, if we look at VPC here. Um, 
so I'm not using the default one and just carved up a couple of smaller 24s uh, slash 24s. We can see one for each one of our zone availability zones. Um, and if you're not very familiar with AWS or not a, a current AWS customer, these numbers are, are different. So from my account to your account, just because they, I mean, they're not physically different. They still say 2A, 2B, 2C, but my A may be your C or, or your B or vice versa. How those numbers are randomized from customer to customer. So when one of the things to note is when you do deploy, if you are an existing AWS customer and you have uh, workloads and you want to try to match the availability zone that you're in, um, that'll minimize any any cross AZ charges, uh, and of course you want, definitely want to match the region if, if possible um, for the cross region charges. Um, so we can see here we are deployed into C. I did remember correctly. Um, so if we take a look at this, we can see our route table, uh, and I have gone through. This did not get deleted. Um, okay, I'll clean them up later. But so these are uh, these are the ENIs, the cross account ENI that we're going to see. So this is our uh, our management segment. Um, so there, there's no firewall rules. So I, I can go through, I'll, I'll try to get logged into this VM, uh, the, the EC2 instance to, to demo this connectivity. Uh, but we won't be able to actually do it until the, the portal comes back up to be able to modify those firewall rules on the VMware cloud side. Um, but this is the path that it's going to go. So, so Z, I do have a, I do have a diagram we, we could bring up here okay. um, that that may show things. If I so I sneak this this, this share from you here quickly. Okay, give me uh, give me one one second here. Okay. Um, so we can see here's our, our instance that we just deployed. Uh, we do pre-provision, so that's another one of the things that we get asked a lot is you know when you, when you're doing the account link email content, uh, what what is going on and why do you need access to my AWS account? So we're going to pre-provision 17 of these ENIs, uh, and this goes from your AWS account, which is like what we're looking at. Right Perhaps we, we have said ENI a lot. Perhaps we can. Uh, Elastic Network Interface, um, and then the cross-account ENI is sometimes referred to as an X ENI, uh, either a little X or an X dash ENI. Um, so if you think of it as uh, the network interface on your laptop or the servers or uh, the ports on on your switch in your data center. Um, so we're going to pre-provision these, and this is the link between your AWS account and and the VMware account where your SDDC runs. So what we were looking at, this guy right here, this this host uh, is not. So it, it's it's no nowhere in my AWS account. It actually it runs in, an, in a VMware managed account, and that's why that's how we can segregate the bill. So anything that runs in your AWS account, you'll get that bill from there. Uh, anything that's in here, any network charges, anything like that, that bill will come from the VMware side of things. And it's not just for billing, it's also it's just the management aspect. So um, that's that's where this this ENI comes from. So you'll see these in here. Uh, don't delete them. Um, we do have a, a run book to go through and, and reinstantiate these if you do either programmatically delete them or somebody is not sure what they're doing and they go through and delete these. Um, your STDC will continue to run, but you will not have uh, VMware Cloud and AWS to your AWS account connectivity until these are restored. Um, so this is the one that we're using right now. We can see it here. So this is how our, our traffic um, would, would and will pass uh, from our EC2 instance that we instantiated. Um, in to VMware Cloud and AWS. So we just had a question came in and say, why 17? <laughs> um, so uh, by default, it's a very good question, by the way. By default, uh, SDDCs are limited to, to 16 hosts. And uh, we provision one extra one for maintenance operations. So if you go through and you, uh, when you first stand up your SDDC, it's going to be four. And you go through and you add another, um, another 12. Uh, we can't get that increased. You have to work with uh, with your customer success. Yeah, we just we just it's a soft cap. The, the sixteen. Yep, it's a soft cap. Yeah. Um, but that's why. So the Y seventeen uh, because the soft cap is uh, sixteen, and that leaves us one for maintenance operations. So uh, just like our our cloud services portal that is under maintenance right now, uh, the SDBCs go under maintenance uh, under maintenance as well for uh, for software upgrades. So virtual center, ESX, uh, NSX. Um, site recovery, things like that. Um, so when those go down, uh, we do add, uh, or not down, when those are uh, go under maintenance, we will add another host. Uh, so we can go through and do a rolling reboot of the ESX hosts uh, without a worry for uh, 
uh, running into any resource contention. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing real quick. I'll let Matt take that over, and I'm going to see if I can't uh, get an ETA on All right. So what I'm sharing with you here, uh, once we see it, I'll bring it over to the screen here for the stream. So hopefully everybody can see that. So this is actually a, a slide uh, that uh, Andrea Siviero, one of our uh, uh, principal architects on one of our partner teams, uh, is putting together. And it's actually something that I've thrown into a, a deck and I actually do. Uh, several of our team members, Lee uh, and, and I, have presented at VMUGS and I'll be in Atlanta in two weeks if anybody's out there. So you'll see this again. So this is... Um, this is a pretty in-depth diagram of how NSXT, uh, and this has some HCX uh, as well in there, but it, it does have a little bit of an overview of how the connectivity actually looks. Uh, we are working at, on, on a more uh, in-depth one. So this is actually one of the ones that Michael Kolos, another member of our team, put together for how things work in the V world. Um, and then this is how it works in the T. And, and the, the basic, the biggest thing is, is that this is that T0 router here uh, that we were talking about earlier uh, that then connects both to the CGW and MGW. They're not exposed directly. Um, so this, this demonstrates what happens when a customer has a direct connect. Uh, and this is what the, the virtual gateway uh, is referring to here, um, which is connected to the direct connect, which that gets paired to our ENI, and that's where that traffic comes in. Uh, you can see also that we have HCX that can extend layer two, and this will do a lot of your migration tasks. Um, so HCX is our hybrid cloud extension. I don't know why it's an X as opposed to an E. Don't ask, um, because I guess we'd like X. But uh, that's how we extend the layer two. Layer two can be extended from your on-prem uh, with via any kind of LTE VPN, uh, NSX Edge in here, or uh, one of your other devices. Uh, and we also have L3 VPN that's available uh, as well. So this is kind of just a brief overview for those who are kind of looking at a, a diagram for how uh, this will look. Uh, not perfect, but it's it's kind of there. So hopefully that kind of answers that question. And one of the one of the things to note. Um, so we're we're still down here, uh, but we can just talk to the slide. So on the on the layer two VPN piece with. Uh, NSX V, we had the option of either using the standalone edge, or if you already had, if you had NSX on-prem and you had an ESG that you wanted to configure that for, you could also configure configure that natively uh, through your on-prem NSX. With NSX T, the only thing that we currently support is uh, is the standalone edge, and that's because the NSX V-based ESG does not uh, doesn't have the capability of of taking the the required parameters for the NSX T-based. Uh, L2 VPN. Yeah, thanks for the clarification. And, and here you can actually see um, this is what we're working on right now is this ENI connection to the Amazon services. So that's that the part that we're working on here. And you can actually see that what we actually have, and, and we haven't really talked too much about this here, but uh, what is this bubble here, this VMware SDC, is actually what we call a shadow VPC. So this is its own vpc and aws that that we create that we manage ourselves um you know kind of a bubble for lack of a better term that houses all of our management components and it's that sddc that is paired to the aws vpc and that's where that linking comes in currently that's a one-to-one -one relationship so are you ready to hand it take it back over um yeah i don't really have anything to demo um I said I can, I mean, you guys can watch me fumble through getting SSH into my uh, my EC2 instance, but until the portal comes back up, it, I mean, that's all you're going to be able to see is uh, me getting SSH into that. Uh, so, yeah, SSH, this, this, um, this deck is available Sorry, publicly. Sure oh, Alexa apparently wanted to answer that question. <laughs> um, I have no idea why. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so this is what, again, this is a deck that I present at, uh, VMUGS. So I will try to find a spot to, um, to share this with you guys, uh, if you're interested in it. It does have quite a, quite a decent overview of what the services and some of our, our use cases. Yeah. Um, I would say, I mean, I guess what we can do is since our, our demo and talk track got cut a little on the short side is maybe we can do this, uh, do this one again in the coming weeks. And uh, be so if you have uh, the 
particularly on the uh, the EC2 to uh, SDDC connectivity, I'll have that set up so we won't have to go through and do that uh, entirely live and just talk. Yeah, some of the maybe functions. we could do this at the office hours next yeah. next time uh, in the APGA time zone, which I think is going to be a couple of weeks from now. I think we go. I can't remember if we go back to six o'clock tomorrow. Anyway, it's on the schedule. We'll figure it out. Um, there's another question came up about uh, changing the AWS link from the SDDC to a new VPC at a later time. It's possible. It's not easy. Yeah, it's going to require it, it'll require a lot of downtime and coordination. Um, so that's one of the things uh, on some of the other previous webinars that we've done is is kind of the the instantiation or the creation of your of your SDDC. Uh, some of the things are pretty flexible to change, like a name, things like that. But your your management uh, cider, your management IP space, uh, when you set that, there's there's no no way to change that. And also your account linking. Uh, so as Matt said, currently today we we only have the ability to link to one or a single AWS account. Um, it's something that we're we're looking at on how to uh, how to expand upon that. Uh, but there are customers that kind of at least in my experience, uh, we have customers that, that, you know, maybe dabble in AWS or, or don't have an AWS account at all, uh, but they want VMC. So they will create an AWS account for that. And then on the other extreme of that, we have customers that have hundreds of AWS accounts that they need to manage connectivity to all of them, uh, or at least a, a large portion of them. Um, Yeah, I oh, sorry, sorry, I was on mute there. I was, I was thinking, oh. uh, so for customers that have a large amount of, of, of Amazon VPCs, we usually put in an architecture that involves a transit VPC. Do you want to maybe talk about that a little? Yeah, so on the on the transit VPC side, there's a number of different ways to do it. It's not uh, it's not just a, a cookie cutter uh, type of an architecture or an implementation, uh, but it, what it kind of boils down to is a is a hub and spoke, and then you'll be, you'll uh, create IPsec tunnels between. Uh, your hub and all your spokes. And one of those spokes would end up being your, your VMware Cloud and AWS SDDC. Um, depending on, uh, just as the hub and spoke uh, analogy goes, depending on how many spokes are in there, uh, it could be, become very difficult to, uh, to manage. And uh, um, the configuration is pretty simple and straightforward, but when things start changing, uh, it can, can become a little bit of planning involved with it. We'll leave it at that. And most of that's to get over the the issue, uh, I don't know, issue, but the architecture of AWS that doesn't allow transit of routing. Yep. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about transit of routing and, and what that's that going to be on the on the fringes of, uh, of of my comfort level. So if we have a specific question, I can I can try to answer it. But uh, yeah, so, so I mean, just some basics. Uh, transit of routing is, and if you see in the diagram here, we have two VPCs paired. If the, we had another VPC off to the side. And we called, you know, RSDC A and the linked VPC B and the other one C. We couldn't go through B to C. Yep. You can't transit a, a VPC to get to the other one because of the way Amazon blocks traffic. Yep. So that's why you have a transit VPC that has a whole bunch of uh, virtual routers uh, in there that handles that routing for you. Uh, so we have another question here. I suppose all hosts of the VMC SDC are physical hosts. Are there any nested hosts approach for testing staging? So, yes, everything you see in VMC is physical. Yep. Yeah, I just saw that, saw that come across. So um, one of the things I can show, uh, if you want to, uh, we can bounce that back here. And, yeah, all yours. Um, sure. Um, so as you can see, so it's just the model, right? Uh, it's a I3P uh, X16. So one of the things that uh, that we worked with on Amazon is the is the metal offering or the dot metal offering. Uh, I think they have a number of uh, different uh, instance types that are coming out. Uh, I3 was the first one. Uh, they currently are I3Ps. We're transitioning to uh, it's it's really just a BIOS update, as far as I understand, uh, to uh, to an I3 metal. Uh, but these are are 100 physical. Um, so just like you said, there's no no pretty little icon, but if we look at my on-prem lab, um, also physical. So hypervisor, our version, our model, um, it's the same, same, same. So yeah, there's no no nested virtualization. Uh, you're, everything's running on bare metal. Um, the 
caveat to that, which I will say is if you're doing stretched clusters, uh, which it would be a, a multi-AZ, so a, a stretched VCN implementation, uh, we do have a witness host that gets provisioned into uh, uh, a VMware selected availability zone in that region uh, that will be on, a, on an M5. So, but all, all, all compute nodes are physical. So another question popped in there. Uh, yep. So on the ENI side, so when you look at this, so they are uh, they are physical. Um, so this would map to so on my SDDC, uh, which we can't really see right now. I guess we can from the virtual center side. So it's just a one node. Um, so this is it, pretty easy to determine. Um, is that this is the ENI that that traffic is going to pass across. Another thing to note that we can tell is where the uh, the edge resides. Uh, so we'll double O CFB. And if you've been on the multi AZ demo that I've gone through, this may look a little familiar. Uh, it's a way of showing that we're actually moving from one AZ to another. Uh, double double zero CFB. So that's where that traffic is going to route. So, and that's that's where the, the ESG or the edge device resides. So it currently resides on this host. Um, if we had multiple hosts, we would be able to tell, we would see that, uh, uh, oh, sorry, bounce back here, that, that they would be in use, uh, but it would be the one with the secondary IP, which is the, where, uh, where the edge lives. So there was another question that came in that's, uh, a little bit outside the scope of this one, but it's, uh, the question is, can I ask, can I use HCX with a VPC transit? So the transit VPC, can you use HCX? The, the two are, are, are not really related. So um, HCX currently does, does not have the ability to, to migrate from, from Amazon native into VMC. I believe it's something that, that the product team has, uh, has discussed. I'm not sure if it's on the roadmap or anything like that, but uh, um, so HCX would be moving from your on-prem workloads, uh, whether it's on-prem or Azure or another another hosting provider um, that has the capability of of uh, supporting HCX, it, it would move from there. So that that HCX traffic would either transit your IPsec tunnel, uh, either route-based or policy-based VPN, um, or in a in the next coming couple of weeks, we can actually that traffic will go over your private VIP for your direct connect. Yeah, the, the short the short answer is yes. Uh, the HCX traffic will go through a transit VPC as long as it's configured all correctly. Well, but but I mean, it's not going to really go go through the transit VPC, like I said. So, I mean, yeah. if I, I guess I, I'm trying to think. So, if if the, if your transit VPC is signed, so if you didn't have an IPsec tunnel from your VMware Cloud and AWS SDDC to on-prem, but you had I'm guessing you have on the other side of your VPC, maybe you had that IPsec connection if you wanted to go through it like that. Um, I'm trying to think, it we may be, may be able to get it to work, but uh, I I don't think it would be the best use of of bandwidth or uh, or time to configure it. I, I'd have to I'd have to think about that and ask on the support. Like yeah, that. no. So we do have a customer that is doing that right now. So. Oh, okay. That, that's how I know. So, so oh. short answer is yes. It's it's not easy, but yes. Perfect. Yeah, and I'm just checking to see if our portal comes back up. Either it's uh... actually, I think it's up. Yep. Uh, is it? It is. Uh, with uh, seven minutes to spare here. We also have another question that's coming in as well while we're clicking through here. So, yeah. uh, uh, my miss a start, but are NSXT based SE Fluence fully automated and available to the cloud console or is it intervention? So, yes, there's intervention right now for early users. So, it's in preview mode. So, you have to kind of be quote unquote approved for it. Uh, we did cover this a little bit earlier, but yeah, you have to be approved for it right now. Uh, when it'll become generally available is probably very well, shortly. When it becomes a default, is going to be a little bit longer. So, um, by the end of the year, early next year, it should be um, much more available. But currently, yes, you need to have uh, somebody on our side 
flip what we call a feature flag for it. Uh, the other question is, does the VMC ENI need to stay the default security or is it to fly as another security group? Yeah, I see that one. Um, so you could apply a, a custom security group. The one thing to note is that the uh, we currently only update the default route table. Uh, so if you have a, a, a complex route table or you're not using the default, uh, there will be some issues with that. And like I said, so when your, uh, when your ESG or your edge moves, um, which is the only time it's going to move is is during a maintenance window. So when that whatever host it's on uh, gets put in a maintenance mode and rebooted, uh, the motion will kick in DRS and that it'll move to another host. Um, you, that's not to say that you cannot go through and manually update that ENI. Uh, I, I know we have at least one customer that has uh, uh, kind of scripted that. There is a little bit of a lag in it. I think it was like a two or two or four minute lag when that happens. So uh, you, you can do it. Um, on the route side, uh, and also same thing on the security group. So the security group is just going to control uh, the traffic that's going to be allowed through that. So if you don't want to use the default, you can apply that to uh, do a custom one. Um, all right, so where we were at before, uh, we're just getting ready to create a segment here. I wanted to show that we're not doing any sleight of hand. Like I said, this is my lab before we could see our management segment, our shared segment. Um, here's the new one that we just created. Um, don't know that we're gonna have time. I guess I can I can stick around for a little bit here since uh, we've got cut a little on the short side. Plug this guy out real quick. All right, so while this guy's cloning, let's see if uh, we can get into this instance here. Don't do this enough. Like I said this is the part where uh, he's gonna get gonna watch me fumble through this. I think I need to run this through Putty Gin or something. What would we do without Google? Well, she's doing this. If anybody has any more questions, feel free to ask as well. This is because
Ten times a charm. All right. So we want to have six, which is Virgil Center, which we cannot do. So we're getting quite the tour of the uh, AWS interface here. We are. You didn't watch me uh, bumble, bumble around the AWS portal. Apologies. Um, traffic, allow. And so, yeah, and, and Z has mentioned this a couple times. It's a, a very important to, to recognize that when you're dealing with uh, the connectivity between the EC2 and, and our, our SDDC, there is two different security contexts that you kind of need to work through. Uh, so this is, the Z is working on the AWS side here. Yep. Uh, actually, you know what, I guess, you know, good, good call, because my security group is wide open. So let's do... I'm uh, transparent here. I may be retracting. I'm not sure that we can get to the management components from EC2. And what we mean by management components is our vCenter and, and some of our hosts. Yeah, yeah, that, that, was, that was a specific question. So if that's the case, let's see here. Um, this guy. So that's 32. Still no. Um, yeah, I, uh, I apologize. I, I, we're, we're running up to the bottom of this. Um, I will definitely take this and get this, I'll, I'll get this pre-configured, um, and then walk through what it, uh, what it actually took. So you guys don't have to watch me. Yeah. Fill around. So someone is saying for the documentation is allowed with an SXT. So, okay. uh, unfortunately, like, uh, like we said, live demos, we had a, a maintenance, um, <laughs> in the middle there. Uh, but we will cover this in our office hours. Um, yeah, I'll definitely get it set up. That's, uh, that's a very good point. So, so uh, if there's any more questions, uh, now would be the time. I think we're going to kind of try to wind her up here. We're a little bit, we're about five minutes over. Uh, I appreciate everybody hanging out with us. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dan, Dan and for, uh, for telling that. Uh, I'm not sure if we've configured one this time, but it looks like we don't have a poll today. Uh, usually we do, um, but that's fine. Um, like I said, I really appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, the recording of this video will be on Twitch for a short period of time. Uh, it will also be available on YouTube after. Uh, the YouTube link is available at the bottom of the Twitch page. I believe it's also sent out in, in some of our follow-up emails. Uh, for people to reference it, if you just search uh, VMware Cloud on, on YouTube, you'll, you'll find us. 
Uh, again, I appreciate all of the interaction as well. That was really great. Uh, I loved all the questions. Um, the more, the better. Uh, like I said, next week we'll be doing our office hours, which is a little bit more free-flowing, uh, even more free-flowing than this, um, <laughs> where we kind of answer all questions and we don't really... Uh, sometimes we have a topic, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we just kind of flow with it and, and get the interaction. But uh, again, I would like uh, everybody to uh, thank everybody again uh, very much for attending. I'd like to thank Z. Uh, this was kind of a last-minute ask I had of his to uh, to present uh, for this. And hopefully... Hopefully didn't show too much. Well... <laughs> Maintenance aside, I think it was fantastic. Uh, but uh, I did have some, yeah, on that, I, I, I did have some uh, some fairly cool things I wanted to show you guys. So apologies on that, uh, on the on the segmentation and uh, and kind of controlling that. So definitely, definitely, we'll, we will we will pick this up on our next uh, APJ uh, slash North America office hours, which is either going to actually I can look at that right now and tell you guys when that's going to be. So the office hours for APJ. Is going to be next week, so uh, October 30th, uh, same time. Is going to be office hours. We'll pick this up then, um, and hopefully uh, by then we do. You'll have a chance to demo all of this EC2 connectivity and, and anything else that that uh, comes up in the meantime. You can uh, tweet at me or tweet at Z if there's anything else you guys want to see, uh, and we'll try to include that into the next week's show. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up now. Again, appreciate everybody's time. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the future, and hopefully we learned something today. Thank you very much. Thank you.